What is up Toyota fans? This is Andrew from Trailrunner Customs. Today we're back with my 2006 Toyota Sequoia. Today we're going to be doing a complete and in-depth restoration of my interior, including repairs, mods, upgrades, and paint matching. So the first thing we have for the interior of this car is some rubber floor mats. These are Motor Trend floor mats from Amazon. They're a little bit of a generic type of floor mat. Um, basically, there was not really any affordable good options for the Sequoia for rubber. Uh, there was some more expensive ones over in the $200 range. These are kind of like a cut to make it fit type thing. They're 50 bucks on Amazon, so I gave them a shot, and honestly, they weren't too bad. So here I'm just cutting off some of the rubber pieces to make them fit a little bit better in the driver floor. This is a driver mat here. We'll get to the back and the passenger in a second, but again, I just have to trim them a little bit to make them fit, and I'll show you what that looks like now. So here's a shot of me putting the initial floor mat in. I decided that it needed a little bit of cutting to make it fit better, so I cut off that piece right there. Once that was cut, I was able to put it back in the vehicle and it fit a little bit better. Again, you're not going to get anything perfect with these generic ones, but overall, they really do just make it a little bit better, especially for an affordable option. Now over on the passenger side, this mat fits a little bit better just because the passenger floor is a little bit more basic, not as many curves or cuts to make. It fits well, now let's move to the back. Okay, so we just got finished with cutting the mats and fitting them in my car. I have all three rows coming in here, a nice, very wide total cover on the back, which is nice. I did have to cut around here it's not perfect i could probably honestly round that off a little bit in fact that's what i might do instead of having it jut out like that that's just where the cut lines were and then i have the same on the other side which covers back here nicely all right so i just cut it and yeah that made it look a lot better so that was easy and then moving into the back we have the long back mat now it is a little bit kinked slash warped just from the shipping but i expect that to fall out here in the next week or two so overall i'm really happy with how they came out so from there i moved on to the door panels now there was a lot of different things i wanted to do to the door panels all of the little plastic pieces around the door handle itself and then the little window controller slash compartment under it and then the speakers all those are really torn up the speaker grills were rusted um the windows window control was just all messed up and the lights were halogen so I was like we need to do a total rehaul on all of the door panels which ended up being a lot of work overall even just taking the door panels off was a little bit more intensive than I expected it to be but once we had the door panels off I grabbed a black semi-gloss paint and then I sanded all the rust off of the speaker grills and then painted them this was just to make them look better overall. I thought that the black would be a really nice accent. And I mean, usually speaker covers are black, so. Another reason I ended up redoing the door panels was because I did have a lot of broken and missing pieces. As you can see, this door handle broke in half when I was opening the door. Also, the front of this was broken when I bought the car, so. I ended up needing to get some screws from Lowe's because I found more missing screws in the door handles. And here is the old door handle on one of the doors. And then the new one, it's a little bit darker gray, as you can see. And so I ended up replacing all four of them just because they were pretty cheap. So here's some footage of me replacing the door handles. I ended up learning a lot about how the door latch and the door handle works during this process. And so once I figured it out, it was just basically rinse and repeat on all four of the handles. And then from there, I could start reinstalling the black speaker grills. Here's the speaker grills for the back doors dry. I really like what the black does for them, and I really think that it looks a lot better than the old rusty slash tan color. So yeah, taking these out and putting these in is super easy. You just slide them into the slot, and then you bend the little pieces in the back to hold it in place. Now that the handle is replaced and the speaker grill is reinstalled, I could put the door panel back on. This was, again, a little bit tedious just because there's so many snaps that you need to get right for it to go back on. I also put back the bulb with the door light i switched those to leds but more about that a little bit later in the video the new door handles also came with the matching dark gray cover so i went ahead and threw those on the door after that i decided that i wanted to paint the window control cover things black to match the speaker grills and so i went ahead and sanded them down put a few coats of primer on 
let that dry, and then I was able to do the same black semi-gloss on there. Now while that was drying, I decided I want to experiment with some Plasti Dip, which honestly was pretty scary. I was thinking to myself, what am I doing when I started? But it actually turned out all right. So I taped off the steering wheel with newspaper, and then I put on my first coat of Plasti Dip, waited about 10 minutes, put on my second coat, and ended up just putting on a coat, waiting 10 to 15 minutes, and then putting on another one, rinsing and repeating. I put on about six coats in total, and then I gave it about an hour, hour and a half, just for everything to dry, and then I began to peel it off. Now, to be honest, I was kind of nervous about peeling it off, just because it basically looks like spray paint when you put it on. But after I peeled the tape away, I knew that it was probably gonna work out just fine. So I took my toothpick and started going around the edges where I wanted it to peel off. I used a toothpick because it wasn't gonna scratch the leather or anything. So I just grabbed the toothpick, traced around the edges, and slowly peeled it back on the line. It also has a tendency to kind of break where there's like an indent or line. So I moved around from there and I was able to peel it all off. So after that, I cleaned up the edge a little bit and I really like how it turned out. Also, while the plastic tip was drying, I replaced the passenger door latch and got rid of the old one. I also painted all the rest of the window switch covers and let them dry while I was working on that. Here's me reinstalling them. I really like how they match the speaker cover and tie everything together. From there, I moved on to replacing the broken AC control unit bezel. As you can see, there's some deep cracks and also a broken button. So I went ahead and got a whole new one. Now removing this unit was pretty easy. I have a whole video in depth about doing that on my channel, but essentially you just need to take out a few screws and pull it straight back. From there, you unclip the wiring harness and you can go ahead and get your new one ready. Now I have a completely new unit here, and so while I was replacing it, I decided to replace the bulbs with LED bulbs. Again, I have a video outlining the LED conversion on my channel, so if you want to check that out, you can. We now come to the process of replacing the bulbs themselves. I have some nice LED T5 bulbs that I got from Amazon, and I'm pointing out exactly where the 11 bulbs are that need to be replaced. So let's run through the process of replacing them. You just twist, they come loose, and you can take them out. There you see the halogen bulb with the green film. Just pull them straight back out, just a little bit of force required, and then put in the new bulb itself. From there, you can just put it right back in the spot where you took it out and repeat the process with all of the other bulbs. Now it's important to note that for some of these lights, polarity does matter. So if you put all the bulbs in and you notice one or two of them aren't lighting up, just take it back out, flip the bulb around to where the positive and the negative are swapped and you will be good to go. So now that you have all the bulbs replaced, you can reattach the wiring harness to the board itself. It's just as simple as pushing it down and snapping it into place. From there, you can set down the back plate and screw it back in using the screws you took out earlier. After that, you're ready to take it to the car and reinstall it. So putting back in the new unit, you just reverse the steps you did to take it out. This new unit really puts the finishing touch on my updated interior and helps tie that entire car together. So here's what the LEDs look like in the bezel at night. Now I not only did this AC control unit, but I also did a couple other smaller pieces. So I'm gonna show you some clips of that and what they look like at night. So that completes the whole interior restoration. I really am happy with how it turned out. I think that the black accents along with the black speaker covers really look nice, especially since I'm going for a silver and black type of vibe on the vehicle. I'm also super happy with how the interior LEDs turned out. Here's a video of me watching a movie on the movie player. I just wanted to test it out, so I put on some Duck Dynasty. But yeah, overall, super happy with how it turned out. Floor mats, everything looks great, and now we can move on to doing more of the outside mods. Just a reminder to check out my company, trailrunnercustoms.com, link in bio. 
We have tons of different grills. This is a little sneak peek into our Toyota collection. We're also working to release different grills for different models in the near future. As always, I appreciate your support. Please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.